Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's good to see everybody. We'll go ahead and put you to bed. And uh, good to see everybody on this beautiful Sunday morning. The sun is shining. The S O N is shining. The S U N is shining somewhere. It just ain't in one. Or that town. Or North Carolina. But anyway, uh, that's all right. Well, we're going to start this uh, today with uh, wishing folks a happy birthday. We've got quite a few. Um, we're going to start with Corbin. He's waited for this for a long time. It's his birthday today. And so today is Corbin's birthday, so we'll be singing happy birthday to Corbin. But we've got some others. Uh, I certainly want to wish uh, Miss Kim Weaver a happy birthday, Miss Mary Adams. Uh, Maybe she's out in the parking lot and can hear us. I saw Janie outside, so Janie's having a birthday on the 13th. Devin, where's Devin at? Devin's not here today. He's having a birthday on the 14th. And Alta, Lynn just had one. She said, and Janie ain't going to do you. A week apart. So Lynn had one, and now Alta's having a birthday. Uh, any anniversary? Seven. Well, how old are you going to be? Eight. Eight? I mean, how old are you? Eight. Eight. Eight today. Okay. All right. So, Corbin's grandpa's having a birthday, too. So, uh, we'll sing to him. But I don't have any uh, anniversaries. Just want to make sure that you go by an anniversary. All right, choir, y'all help me. We're going to sing happy birthday. everybody here on the inside. It's good to see a good crowd this morning on this rainy day. It's good to see all the ones out in the parking lot, and we, uh, we appreciate them uh, being out there, and all those joining us live on Facebook. We're glad that you are here. A couple of announcements today. Of course, we just want to keep uh, reminding people that our youth and our kids ministries are meeting on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and uh, they practice so social distancing uh, as best they can, and uh, masks are recommended. And um, so that's going on, and then we have a Bible study in here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. This afternoon, I appreciate you being in prayer for uh, Brittany and Chris. They'll be getting married today up at Lansing Park, and uh, I have the privilege of doing that, so that's good. Then we've got several more announcements. Uh, give me just a minute, because there's quite a few things going on. Now, in your bulletin, You'll see, uh, and continue to see uh, about asking for prayer warriors, the encouragers program at Asheville School. I mentioned that several times, and there's information there. There's more information in the vestibule if you'd like it. Uh, our October 25th, we're having our one day revival. Um, uh, Pastor Michael uh, Greer from Cross Point Church, Church in Lexington. This is uh, Kevin's cousin. And so he'll be with me, be with us here on that day, uh, 10 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So we're having two services on that Sunday, and just to having a one-day revival. As of right now, Brandon Harden's going to be here that morning singing, and whoever he can drag along with him, that's what he said. And uh, and so uh, and also we're planning on uh, Brother Sonny Williams and Still Bless being here Sunday night, October 31st. We're participating in the Trunk or Treat. Uh, countywide effort. Um, if you'll see Karen Ham, uh, if you need any more information, you give her a call. But what we do need is folks willing to come and set up. And uh, and but if you can't do that, then we need candy. So please bring uh, lots and lots of candy. If you'll put it in the vestibule, that would be appreciated. Or just hand it to Karen on a Wednesday night, or whatever the case uh, might be. Just don't give it away. That's a good idea. <laughs> Do not put it in my car, because Karen will never see it. No. Um, a couple other things I want to add. You've seen them up on the overhead. Um, we 
going to be a fundraiser for Destiny Lions. We've been praying for her for a good while. She's a 11-year-old uh, sweet little girl with leukemia. There's a lot going on. If you, uh, if, if you on Facebook, you've seen some of that. But there's a fundraiser going on at Midway Baptist Church this Thursday. Uh, you have to call and, and order your barbecue plate and save bucks with all the fixings. And so you can go by and pick it up or they'll deliver it for 10 plates or more out of business. Uh, so if you can help out with that, that would be great. Um, there's some information there. I don't know if we printed out a flyer or not, but, uh, but there's a number. Uh, we can get you that number if you need it. Uh, also, this coming Friday night, uh, there's going to be a candlelight virgil for missing and exploited kids. And uh, some say, well, that's not doing much about it, but it's praying. It's getting some people to pray. There's going to be a couple different pastors praying. Uh, it's going to be a candlelight uh, Virgil. Virgil. Vigil. Virgil, sorry. Vigil. And uh, uh, so, um, you know, just be praying about that. If you come out, you can sit in your car. And uh, so it's at the Ash County Courthouse. So right in front of the courthouse. We'll be on the steps there at the courthouse. All right, any other announcements? Okay, so tomorrow. Do we have to do anything? No. Okay, well, that's good. Did not know that. So you stop by Lancet Foods, make the order, pay for it, and you pick it up there on Thursday. Very good. That makes it a whole lot easier. So. Uh, do what you can if you just want to donate some money. Uh, uh, I'll be in Boone that day, uh, but I plan on donating some money toward it. Uh, I can't imagine what those parents are going through. And I believe the dad may be the bone marrow trans. Yeah. Uh, and he was the one working, so. Any other announcements? Well, let's go ahead and stand up this morning. I guess uh, uh, we've got a couple members of the praise team. I don't know if y'all want to be down here. I don't know if y'all want to go up there. Whatever you want to do, but need you down here. Uh, Scott and Wendy, uh, not to call anybody out or anything, but uh, uh, we, uh, we rely on you, Bobby, whoever else. Uh, you guys come. Let's stand together. We're going to sing hymn 339, Standing on the Promises. <laughs>
could turn on the fire mics so they could help us. And they got the fans going. But don't turn the fans on. I can stand the noise. So uh, we'll adjust it accordingly. That feels good. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. If we do, we think about um, David and Terry. Please be uh, praying for David and Terry this week. She'll go back to the doctor on a Tuesday. And just be praying for them. Gilbert Busby. Yeah. Okay, Los Angeles. So her dad. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come into this place. God, we thank you for uh, a place that we can come into is drive. Lord, whether we're in here or out in the parking lot, uh, sitting at home, Lord, wherever we're at, Lord, unite us in your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray today for these prayer requests that's been mentioned, Lord. I lift them up to you. Some of them, Lord, are just so sad. And uh, But, Lord, I pray, uh, even as we're mindful of this family for the fundraiser, Lord, uh, we just pray, God, that you'd be with their destiny. Lord, there's so many kids that are sick and stuff. And Lord, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about the, uh, the prayer vigil, Lord. Uh, I can't imagine... Lord, children are missing and exploited. Lord, what a shameful thing. And Lord, we know you don't like that. And Lord, I pray that you're intervening. Lord, I pray that uh, uh, you, you know that you don't like little children hurting. And so, God, I pray for them. And I pray for comfort and love and peace. Lord, I pray today where we fall short. Lord, you're quick to give us mercy. And you're quick to give us grace. And Lord, I'm thankful for that this morning. We do fall so short of what you deserve and what you require. But when we fall short, Lord, the blood of Christ covers that shortness and it covers those sins. So I'm thankful for that today. Empower us today that we might be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And may all that's done and said bring you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now we're standing on the promises because that's the only thing we can stand on. Everything else is sinking sand. So I see here, uh, if not only we're going to stand, we're going to lean. So let's stand up and sing hymn number 453, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. <laughs>
several people this week, and uh, that song was pretty powerful to them. And uh, so we're gonna do it again. We did it last week. Uh, we're gonna stand up and sing it this week. So some of you may recognize it. Some of you were not here last week, so I'm gone. But uh, I'm pretty sure you can follow along.
Bibles and turn to the 23rd Psalm once again. Did you have that feeling you forgot something about the dying thing? Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou knowest my cup with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't that beautiful? As we continue today in our twenty-third in the twenty-third Psalm, we notice that we have seen God, <coughs> Yahweh, as the good shepherd. And as long as he is our good shepherd, we shall not want. The opposite of that, when he is not or no longer our good shepherd, we expect we'll be in want. We talked about Wednesday, the fact that he leads us into green pastures and still waters. Brother Donnie told us that means deep relaxation. And God has it all laid out for us. I like that. That stuck with me. So as we move on today, there's a couple of things uh, that we want to add. We're going to be looking some in verse 4, well, verse 4 and verse 5. Because we begin in verse 6, and we've covered verses 1 and 2 and 3. And so uh, the last part of verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5 is what we're going to be looking at. But let me remind you today that as we did this study of Psalms 23, that we found that God is a personal shepherd. We can say this together when we say the Lord is my shepherd. Let's do that. The Lord Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. No, he's my shepherd. Y'all keep saying my. He's my. He's my shepherd. shepherd. All right. The Lord is my shepherd and he's a personal shepherd and the Lord as that shepherd loves me. He's not a hired servant. He knows his sheep. He loves his sheep. And his sheep know him. And he says that his sheep follows him because we know their voice. You know, in a world so loud today, and I'll make one political statement today, and after I say it, you'll say, well, that wasn't a political statement. But some might say it was. But I, I, I thought I had this thought in the last week or so, if all the noise today, it's easy for me because... I'm going to vote for life. You vote the way you want to. In the bulletin, it says early voting starts this Thursday. I hope you're registered to vote. I hope you go out and vote, and you're free in America to vote any way you want to. But my stipulation is this. I'm voting for life. I can tolerate a lot when I know somebody's pushing for life. The Lord is my shepherd. He loves me. And we know his name. In a world with all this noise that's going on. Isn't it loud today? Seems like everywhere you turn, there's just a, lot, a whole lot of noise. But even in a world with lots and lots of noise, we can hear the shepherd's voice. It's tough sometimes, isn't it? When you're asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do here? What is my next step? What, you know, how do you want me to handle this situation, Lord? And you're listening, and you're like, I don't know if I hear him or not. But you got to keep on. You stay in his word. You keep praying, right? And eventually, you will get to a point. Maybe he needs to teach you patience or whatever or listening skills. But at some point in time, you will know that it is God speaking to you. Amen? Just keep on. 
he impress on you today to know where God is? You say, well, God's everywhere. Well, that's true. But you can go meet with God. And one thing that David knew, David knew where the shepherd would be. So God is a personal shepherd. He loves me and he leads me. See, the shepherd was a guy. The sheep didn't need to know where the green pastures was at. Listen to me, church. They didn't need to know where the green pastures was at. They didn't need to know where the still waters was at. They just needed to know where the shepherd was at. Now, if that don't help you, we might as well quit right here. If you know where the Lord's at and you follow him as shepherd, you don't need to know that other stuff. That's that's tough. That's hard, isn't it? Man, I'm telling you what, I, I get it. I know it because I like to plan. I, I have contingency plans. I have a plan in case this don't work. I, I usually try to anyway, but but you can't live your life that way. you got to trust the Lord and you just got to follow the shepherd. Follow the shepherd. Verse 3, the Bible says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, everything we are, all that we do, and, and everything that we do, we do for his sake. If you're faithful today, you're faithful for the Lord, for his sake. You're not faithful for me. You're not faithful for anybody else. You're faithful to the Lord. To the shepherd. For his name's sake, you're faithful to him. If you give, you don't give for anybody else, but you give for his name's sake. So when we give, when we do, when we do all these things, we do it so the Lord will be praised. So his name might be lifted up. Not our name, but his name. We do it, we do it for his sake, and that's what David is talking about there. Whatever you do, whatever you give, you give for his sake. So it's important to know that the shepherd loves us and the shepherd leads us. That's important to know, especially now in this life. And so we found that God is not only a personal shepherd, but he's a providing shepherd and a protecting shepherd. See, verse 4 tells us that the Lord, a shepherd, never leaves us. He never forsakes us. You say, preacher, there is one time when he leaves the 99 and goes after the one. You're right, but I bet you he made sure the 99 is squared away. I bet you figure, he figured that at some point in time that shepherd knew that he had that one good sheep. And he knew that everybody else would follow that one good sheep while he went over here to take care of that lost sheep. Guarantee it. That's why he made pastors and deacons and he made elders and he made Sunday school teachers. That's why he made you to be a leader in your home, in your community, at your workplace, and in your school. God gives us that privilege, that opportunity to hold down the fort sometimes. That's a privilege. God doesn't need me. God doesn't need you. But he chooses to use us in his ministry. I'm thankful for this. The Lord is shepherd. He won't leave us. Sometimes the paths of righteousness takes us through the dark valleys. But it's often in these dark valleys that the most righteousness in our life is produced. When we're held to the fire. When God puts us through the test. Many times that's when we learn the most. It don't make sense to me. Seems like I can learn a whole lot better when I'm relaxed, maybe sitting up under my own in somewhere, camping somewhere, I can just relax, read, and study, and learn. But, but I learn a lot when my confidence begins to grow. Somebody I'm dealing with, somebody I'm talking with, somebody I'm praying with, they say something, I'm like, oh Lord, what do I say? And all of a sudden, this, this verse pops up in my head. Well, that ain't me. If you've seen my test scores, you know that ain't me. That's the Lord giving me that. When I pray before a test, I always say, Lord, help me to recall the things that I study. I tried to study so hard. Help me to remember those. The things I just don't know, give me grace and mercy. 
These dark valleys are difficult to travel, but notice the reason that we can enter them. What David says, we can enter to the, the, the shadow of, the, of death into the valley because we fear no evil. What does the text say? Verse 4, because you are with me, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil because you are with me. Could you imagine going through this life? I know we just talked about that the other day. Could you imagine going through this life not having the Lord in your life? Can't imagine that, can you? A little first grader stood in front of his classroom to make a speech about what he wanted to be and what he wanted to do when he grew up. And he told the, he told the class, he said, I'm going to be a lion tamer. And have lots of fierce lions. I'll walk into the cage and they will roar. The teacher responded said, well, you're going to have to be very brave to be a lion, a lion tamer. And the little boy thought about this for a moment. He said, no, not really. My mommy will be there with me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the preciousness of, of that, his mama. Boy, have you ever seen a mama bear? Whoo! I ain't talking about a uh, four-legged. I'm talking about two-legged mama bear. There's something there young and boy, that mama bear go off. I better not mess with no mama bears. I'll have my mommy with me. So precious. You know, Psalms 23, uh, when you first begin to read it, it presents this life of tranquility. Life is good. It's things like you never like nothing, you know, fear no evil, goodness. Woo! That sounds pretty good. But David's life was far from safe. Here's a bit. Say, I don't know why people think at some point in time that when you become a Christian, life's going to be easy. I found that life is actually harder. Think about David. He was under attack. So many times in the Bible we read where uh, Saul, King Saul, had sought to kill David. And David didn't do anything to him. It's not fair, is it? Life's not fair, is it? Let me say that again. Life isn't fair. The Philistines wanted him dead. His best friend Jonathan was killed. His son Absalom uh, tried to kill him. His own son is a far cry. From the tranquility that we see in Psalms 23. More to it than what's on the surface. But he knew that God would not forsake him. To equate ease with goodness is to miss the point of what Psalms 23 is teaching. If that life is in Christ. Life is good though, isn't it? I mean, tough times. Gosh, some of y'all have really known some tough times. But God is faithful. And God is good. And he supplies all that we need. Life is good if that life is in Christ. Life is peaceful if that life is in Christ. You know, he's there for us. He never leaves us. And we know that we can go through the valleys. We know that we can go through these things because he is there with us. That he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And that's what David is saying. I will fear no evil. No matter what. I'll keep running from Saul. At one point in time, he had to keep running from his own son. So many things. What about when he stood in front of that bear in that line? What about when he stood before Goliath. That was not a life of tranquility. David sounded like a pretty awesome dude. I mean, David sounds like a man. He ought to be the leader of the men's ministry, right? He was the man of man, men. And so this was uh, incredible. So, But we move on. The Lord as shepherd never leaves us, but the Lord as shepherd labors. And I want us, to, I, I want us all to get this point. The Lord as shepherd labors with us and for us. Now maybe on the surface that doesn't make any sense because it's, it's the Lord that does things. 
But God allows us to do things. And when we fall short, he takes us the rest of the way. It's just the way it works. See, he was not a hired servant. In fact, he was the trail boss. He was the owner of the ranch or the owner of the farm. He didn't have to check with anybody. The Lord is my shepherd. We know that shepherds was probably uh, folks that were hired or they were slaves or they were the youngest son. But the Lord is shepherd. He's the boss. He ain't got to check with nobody. He can just do what he does. In biblical times, uh, a shepherd consistently used uh, both a rod and a staff. Now, he, David says here, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So both of those things were used to protect the sheep. But they were used in very specific ways. They had two different uh, purposes. The rod was used, it was a little shorter stick, a little thicker stick. Uh, something you might see a trucker check his tires with. What do you think about that, Jim? What about that? Do you remember popping them tires? I didn't say check a tire. I said pop a tire. Check a tire and pop a tire means two different things. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but think about that little short thing. Man, you ever been hit with a rod? I reckon it'll change your direction. He would use this short rod to, to, to count the sheep. He would direct the sheep. He would use it as a weapon. But the rod was also used for prodding. Now some of you, I don't know, some of you farmers, have you ever used an electric prodder? I see, I see a couple of them. You ever been kicked by a cow that you use electric prodder on? <laughs> Remember that. This rod was used to prod the sheep. But a willing sheep didn't take much prod. Maybe just a little bump. Isn't it amazing how different sheep are? But while we're talking about that, isn't it amazing how different children are? I mean, your first kid, and, and then your second kid comes along, and you're like, wait, what? Your second kid wasn't nothing like your first kid, but they're not supposed to be, are they? David said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I suspect David is falling into the category of a willing sheep. Because he didn't get the full force of the rod. Maybe he just got prodded a little bit. Some sheep, however, were stubborn. And that's the reason for the staff. See, the staff had a crooked, curved end. And the shepherd used that staff to strongly exert their will upon a sheep. If a sheep was going astray, what did they do? Take that curved thing and yank it back got to do to some bullish sheep, some sheep that's not so willing or stubborn. Or you could reach over there and hook that sheep and gently, gently move it back into place. You know, it's amazing to me how different uh, discipline comes from parents. I was thinking... Uh, uh, we, we've had this conversation. Uh, I'll be the first one to stand up and say I wouldn't model myself as a great parent. Uh, I was more like my dad because I said so. You know. And uh, uh, you know the life motto, if you're going to cry, well, I'll give you something to cry about. You know, that's what my dad say all the time. I'm crying about a lost puppy or something. My dad, you don't cry, I'll give you something to cry about. Hopefully you're not. Every child is different, and discipline is different. But you know, that's what it takes. You can't discipline a child the same way every time. I remember when I was 16 years old, and I remember what I did. And I was begging, begging, begging my daddy to beat me within an inch of my life. But Lord, please don't take my kids. 
<laughs> right? I mean, just give me a big old whopping. Just don't take my keys. But he knew. He knew what to do. Different ways. But there's different ways to deal with the sheep. So he may use that staff to maybe keep them moving. So that rod and that staff, David said, it gives him comfort. Well, when you think about it from that perspective, maybe it doesn't make any sense. But when you think about it from the perspective that we all know what he's talking about, it does bring us comfort. I, I find a lot of comfort knowing that if I get over here, that the Holy Spirit's going to say, that's not where you're supposed to be. And you come back over here, right? You know what I'm talking about. That, Holy, that old Holy Ghost conviction, that's his rod and that's his staff. And it, and it brings us back. Gets us going in the right direction. You know, he can also use that crook of that staff to pull the sheep from harm. So these tools were extremely important to the shepherd. So I thought about today, modern, right now, what is a good rod and what is a good staff that our good and great and chief shepherd uses? Amen. Right here. Amen. This is the Lord's rod. And it'll tell us where to go. It'll tell us what we can do and what we can't do. You know, so many people who's against Christianity say it's just a it's just a religion with a lot of rules. I don't feel that way, do you? I feel like I have so much freedom and grace and mercy and love. I feel like my God loves me, don't Amen. you? Amen. And he blesses me. And he's there with me and he's walking. And sometimes when I get out of line, he does have to prod me. And sometimes it could be a soft prodding. And sometimes he's got to whoop me. It just depends. Such a blessing. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Listen to this. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The great shepherd of the sheep, through his blood, has made an everlasting covenant. So in this study, we found that our God is a personal shepherd, a providing shepherd, a protecting shepherd. But we want to end today in seeing that he is a preparing shepherd. He's a good shepherd, and he knows what he's got to do to prepare. Our God, our Lord, our shepherd, provides peace in the midst of our trouble. I don't understand that. We've talked about that so many times. How God can provide peace that passes all understanding. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, God can give us a peace. He does that. The Bible says in verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me. Now look at the example that he uses. That is, to me, that is absolutely amazing. The example that he uses. Thou preparest a table for me in the midst of mine enemies. David said he didn't have to run from his enemies, that he could just sit down to suffer. Now think about that. Think about being in the midst of your enemies, people that's trying to hurt you and trying to kill you, and you just sit down and fix your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or warm up some chili beans or whatever. You just sit down and you eat in peace, even though your enemies is about. That's the example that the Lord has given us. I can remember in the army eating MREs, meals ready to eat. They're dehydrated meals is what they are. Add water. Oh, yummy. Lord, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing until you pop open that bag of chicken a la king. See what I'm talking about? You remember that, don't you? Chicken a la king, I like hot dog ones. It's pretty straightforward. Chicken a la king was nasty. But if you was hungry, you'd eat it. 
and you just get this cookie, it's all crumbled. But I can remember eating that sometimes on the go while we was marching. And if you drop it, somebody else going to get your dinner that night. I can't imagine that this idea, this picture, sitting down with enemies around us. But let me tell you something. That doesn't say anything about us. That doesn't say anything about the enemy. Let me tell you who it says something about. It says something about the host. The host is so powerful. The host is so awesome that he can say, sit down there and eat your supper. I don't know about y'all, but I don't eat dinner. I eat supper. I eat lunch, and then I eat supper. But, but sit down there and eat your supper, and I'm going to hold back the enemy. You don't have to worry about it. You're like, but he's behind me. You don't have to worry about it. The host says, I'll take care of that. You eat your dinner, and I'll take care of all this other stuff. That's the visual image that God is putting in our hearts and in our minds today. That means there's nothing we can't face. There's nothing we can't go through, no matter who or what the enemy is. The Hebrew word, uh, had is... It, it could be used two different ways. It could be it could mean a table, or it could literally mean uh, a, an animal cloth, like a picnic. So you know, it ain't red and white. But, you know, they'd lay it out and put the food out there. So either one, no matter. The saw hand represents an intimate table of fellowship. Man, I've been in some of your homes to sit down and eat, and I'm like. Let's get with. Let's get on with it. I wasn't thinking about my enemy. I wasn't thinking about what I had to do. I was thinking about eat. What it was that you put before me. Yeah, boy. It was an honor to be invited to the king's table. But the ultimate honor is to be invited to God's table. He didn't have to worry. Even though the enemy was around, he wasn't afraid. He said. I just sit down and eat my supper. So he provides. He provides peace in the midst of our trouble. But our closing thing today is listen to this. He provides a purpose in the midst of our trial. Now that's amazing. Because, because we're here at the table, our enemies around. And we can focus on what we're going to eat. And we can focus on what we're going to do. Because he says, Thou anointest my head with oil. Now time won't permit. But just know this. This reference to oil is, is, one, uh, is one to be thought of as a purpose. Oil has a purpose. You know, you, you didn't use oil for nothing. It was used for separating one for service. It was used for healing, for burying somebody. Many other purposes. But understand this. This represents a purpose. So even in the midst of our trials and our troubles and our tribulation, yes, he provides peace, but he also provides purpose. You say, why am I going through this? Why did this happen to me? Now, anointest my head with oil. A sign of favor. See, David had once been anointed as king of Israel by Samuel. But on this day, when he was looking back, he knew that he had been anointed by God himself. He had been blessed. He had been shown favor. And so his response is what? My cup runneth over. When you think about how David wrote this toward the end of his life, later on in life, looking back of all that he'd been through, can you still say, my cup runneth over? Every one of us can say that this morning. I love that song. I had to list out. I listened to it maybe 20 times yesterday. That's what I do. When I like a song, I listen to it over and over and over. I'm drinking from my song. God is indeed the good shepherd. And David writes this psalm from the, view, from the viewpoint of how blessed he was. 
So we were in where we actually began in this study. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You don't want to miss it. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Let me ask Miss E if she will to come and just play for a few minutes. We'll see what we want to do is we just want to take a few minutes and give you time to think about this. The Lord's speaking to you. Just listen. you for coming today. I'm so glad each and every one of you were here. I'm thankful for each and every one of you out in the parking lot. I uh, stepped out there a while ago, catch a little cool weather, and I was like, oh yeah. And I thought, oh man, there's people sitting out here. I forgot about it. <laughs> so they probably didn't know what I was doing, having a fit. Uh, but all those joining us Facebook Live, thank you. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, and I pray that everything that's done and said here has brought you glory. And Father, I pray today if there's one dealing with something on their heart, Lord, that they'll get in touch with me or someone they trust and love. Lord, there's no point in anyone having to deal with this themselves. But Lord, as uh, the psalmist said, as David said, that he would encourage himself in your word. We love you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate it.